recognizing the leader of the third party. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to speak to Bill 5. Um, we, our caucus has been calling for a strategic innovation fund for a long time, including through the entire minority government, and we welcome the intention behind this bill. There are indeed exciting possibilities here, but at the moment, that is all that they are. They are possibilities. We do have a number of questions, and I've heard these questions also raised by the members of the official opposition about some of the choices made in this legislation and in the structure of the fund, about the independence of the board, about how effective this fund will be at meeting its goals, and about transparency and accountability. We are supportive of the principle of, strategic, of a strategic innovation fund, which can support the growth of tech companies here in BC and strengthen and grow our tech sector and create more quality jobs in British Columbia. And it can also encourage innovation that aligns with our strategic goals and strategic advantages, especially around climate and life sciences. Tech sector, tech sector growth um, has been an issue in British Columbia. We have a significant problem where we lack the infrastructure to support tech companies to grow to scale and to anchor in British Columbia. And it has been identified for quite a while that this has disadvantaged our province in terms of expanding in this industry. Too often we have promising startups, but they aren't able to grow up here. So they end up being acquired by US companies or move elsewhere and we lose the talent, the business activity and the potential growth of a tech ecosystem in our province. The BC Tech Association has said in responding to the announcement of a strategic innovation fund, quote, this has huge potential to support the growth of BC Tech's startup with funding the programs and supports necessary to scale. However, they also noted that there may be missed opportunities in the way that this fund has been designed and structured. I'll dig into this more in committee stage. Generally, this government has come up short when it comes to outlining an ambitious direction for our economy and taking the steps to make it a reality. This fund has the ability to support something of a shift in our economy, the growth of emerging technologies and innovative companies that align with our goals, but it doesn't make up for a lack of vision and ambition. Government needs to be clear about what it is trying to achieve with a fund like this and set the mandate and scope so that decisions are effective and support the growth of our economy in a positive direction. The opportunity for this fund to support innovative technologies that help us tackle the central crises of our time, including the climate crisis, is important. It could help us to seize the economic opportunities that we have in British Columbia by developing technologies that address and provide solutions to the climate crisis. For many years, we have shared concerns of experts and industry leaders about the opportunities BC is foregoing by not having investments targeted at growing this part of our economy in comparison to other provinces, notably Quebec and Ontario. BC has been way too passive and has missed opportunities to leverage federal investment. We are very hopeful that this can start to signal a shift in how we approach this sector. We have seen some concern about the picking winners and losers through a fund like this, or that this amounts to corporate welfare. However, a well-designed and strategic innovation fund isn't in the business of picking winners and losers. It's in the in business of investing strategically in our economy, to support innovation that aligns with our goals and values and fixes gaps in the ecosystem that exists today that are barriers to growth. But we still don't know how this is going to be executed in practice, and we have a lot of questions that will remain. The structure of NBC and how it will work in practice and how well it will fulfill the promise and potential uh, will absolutely need to be dug into at the committee stage. We need more clarity around the investment criteria. Section 4 of this bill says, the purposes of the corporation are as follows. A, to make investments that achieve a financial return. B, to make investments that support the social, economic, and environmental policy objectives of this government. 
there is some concern that we have around this. We absolutely support the idea of a triple bottom line approach, particularly regarding sustainability, climate impacts. But we are concerned that this language is too vague and we absolutely need to know more. The NDP's economic and environmental policy objectives currently include massive fossil fuel subsidies and betting on LNG. And as we can see from uh, graphs that have been released this week, BC is a significant outlier of Western countries and democracies in terms of reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, while the rest of the world has gotten on board and is reducing those emissions, ours are going in the wrong direction. And so we are concerned that we would see hundreds of millions of dollars deployed to attempt to clean up inherently dirty fossil fuels, uh, or as it should be, is this money actually going to go to innovative companies that can help tackle the climate crisis? It's impossible to actually answer this question from the definition. And I think that we can all agree that trust us is not enough at this point. We need more clarity on the board's mandate and scope of activities and the structure of how decisions will be made, including the independence of the board chair. The bill lays out a structure that includes representation from within the public service and the private sector. However, it is a little surprising, Honorable Speaker, that NBC's board has been appointed already. News came out late last week. Uh, but given that we are in the process of debating this legislation right now, uh, it's, it seems uh, a little uh, presumptive to appoint a board before the legislation has actually passed the House that enables the framework for that to happen. Even with a majority, I think it is important for a government to respect the processes and procedures of this House. And of course, we, we will want to properly understand the process that was used to appoint this board and the plan. I'll point to the comments made in the Vancouver Sun by Vaughn Palmer he mentioned that the NBC Corporation will be governed by principles of, quote, transparency and accountability, is what the Minister for Jobs mentioned in his opening comments. But when he asked the Minister for the business plan on which this high-risk venture was based, he was told it was a, quote, confidential document for Cabinet eyes only. As Mr. Palmer points out, this half billion dollars for this investment fund is public money. And so is the risk, but the business plan is the exclusive property of the minister and the cabinet colleagues. I think that what we need to see is a far greater level of transparency on this and many other issues related to this government. Overall, we support the intent and the principle behind this bill. We need to have many questions answered and we need to see much more detail on how this will be implemented and we will be pursuing these questions at committee stage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.